CNN's uh, senior national correspondent, Kyung La. Uh, she is joining us from Iowa right now with one of the leading 2020 presidential candidates, Senator Kamala Harris. There she is on the bus. Uh, Kyung, uh, Senator Harris is kicking off a five-day bus tour. You're on board. Uh, there's a lot of breaking news back here in Washington. Perhaps you'll get the senator's take on some of it. Yeah, we're going to ask her about that right away. The reason why we're moving is because this bus is actually moving, Jim, and uh, this is the very first day of your bus tour. But yes. I want to get to the, the breaking news about okay. Sue Gordon uh, leaving. Um, second in command of DNI, what, what do you think about this resignation? I'm, I mean, I'm not surprised. I, you know, I'm on the Senate Intelligence Committee. Um, I meet on a consistent basis with um, leaders of our intelligence community. They are hardworking. They are patriots to their core. And, um, you know, I don't know why she's leaving, but I, I think that this president has been less than supportive of our intelligence community and the the, the importance of their work and the, the, the kind of sacrifice that they put into it. So, um, you know, when we have a, pr a president who's, uh, you know, who carries the, the, the role of commander in chief, but, but coddles and, and cuddles up to strongmen around the world um, when the intelligence community has told us Russia interfered in the election of the president of the United States, but our president prefers to take the word of the Russian president over the word of the intelligence community on the issue of uh, the, the, the student who was killed, an American student who was killed. Um, the president prefers to take the word of the North Korean dictator over the word of the American intelligence community on the subject of a journalist who was assassinated and a journalist who had American credentials and he prefers to take the word of a Saudi prince over the word of the American intelligence community. Um, I, I, I think that the people who work that and do that work do it um, with great purpose and um, with, with a sense of of, of, of real commitment to our nation's security. If you have ever gone to um, to the buildings where, where they work, you'll know that you'll see stars on a wall with no names because so much of the work they do is work that they cannot take credit for. So they do this work not for any selfish purpose. Let's talk about the president. He recently visited El Paso. Today there's video surfacing of him talking about the size of his crowds. Uh, we, you heard what he said after the news conference with Sherrod Brown and, and the mayor of Dayton. What, what, should he have even gone to Dayton and El Paso? I mean, he's just so... Um, his preoccupation with size. I'll leave that for someone else to analyze. But I will say that... Um, this president has used the platform that is given to the office of the president of the United States in a way that has been about trying to divide our country. He has used language that has been born out of hate. And um, he, he generally shows no evidence of, of any natural ability to have empathy. And, you know, so, I mean, of course, the president of the United States should visit um, and should be in a place that has experienced such tragedy. But I think that this president um, doesn't really have the capacity to have empathy. And, um, and I just, you know, my heart goes out to not only the families, but um, also the leaders of those communities who are trying to pull it together and, and, and stand strong. As Elizabeth Warren and Beto O'Rourke have said, that he is a white supremacist. I think you should ask him that question. Are you willing to say that? I think you should ask him that question. I'd be interested to see what his answer is. Joe Biden has said today that the president has what he has done, quote, encourages white supremacy, that he doesn't feel that there's much of a distinction and what he is doing may be even worse. Do you concur? Yeah, with those I think words? that's absolutely right. I think that's absolutely right. Um, this is a, a president who has, I mean, we don't even need to, the, 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 the sad thing about this is it's no longer really a debatable point. There is just a long list of statements and tweets and behaviors from this president that make it very clear um, that he, he possesses hate and, um, and that he is, he is divisive and that he is a racist.
Is it important to call him a white supremacist, though, as some of the, your competitors have said? I think it's important to call it what it is, which is that we have a president of the United States who does not reflect the values of who we are as a people. He is someone who gives, who empowers white supremacists and, um, and who condones their behavior. And that is not the kind of president that I think most Americans can be proud of, much less support. Now, Senate Leader Mitch McConnell has signaled that he will at least talk about background checks, the red flag laws, as a member of the Senate body. What do you think about his shift? I think he needs to put the bill on the, on the floor for a vote and call all of us back to Washington, D.C. to vote on it right away. He doesn't want to call people back, but he says he will make it front and center. Well, I think that on this, we have to judge everyone by their conduct, not just their words. And we can't let this go without talking about where we are. We're on the bus. Tell, tell, me, tell me what this is. We are on the bus. We are, we're right now in Sioux City, Iowa. And um, we are, for the next five days, going to be on this bus traveling throughout Iowa from river to river. Um, we'll be in 11 counties and talking about our 3 a.m. agenda, which is about the issues that wake people up in the middle of the night and about how we're going to solve those problems. Because I do believe strongly that the American people want a problem-solving president, and that's the kind of president I intend to be. Do you feel that the problem solving that you're, you're focusing on, yeah. not looking at, uh, I think you've said you don't want to talk about the structural change or be too ideological. You want to look at solving these kitchen table I issues. I want to solve the things that wake people up in the middle of the night, which is about health care. It's about their, can they keep a job or get a job? Can they pay the bills by the end of the month? Those bread and butter issues that literally wake people up in the middle of the night because they are worried about whether they're going to be able to see a week through, much less a month through. Those are my priorities. Some of the people who have won previously, Trump, make America great again, Barack Obama with you know, hope and change, they've yeah. been a bit more sweeping, have a larger vision. Uh, you've taken a different route. Do you sense that voters are looking for this versus what we've seen I think before? That the, um, I think that Americans want in a leader somebody who actually sees their life and, and is interested and, and, and is interested in solving the problems people face every day. I think that people don't, you know, they don't want in their leader somebody who can just give a beautiful speech and grand gestures. They want action, an action that is about solving the problems that they face every day. And those are my, those are my priorities. Um, because look, when it comes down to it, if people can't get through the end of the month, if we can't solve the, the issues that they deal with every day, what else does it, what else matters? Did you happen to see the video of the children crying when their parents were taken away by ICE officials? I have not seen the video, but I know about it, and I know about um, the work of ICE under this administration, and it is immoral. These are human rights abuses being committed by the United States government. I serve on the Senate Homeland Security Committee from the first day I arrived there about two years ago. I've been taking DHS to task and ICE to task. I was, the, I think, the first person in the United States Senate to ask about this child separation policy. And it is clear to me that this administration has, has been not only irresponsible, but has literally committed human rights abuses. And these most recent raids, hundreds of, of, of people who are now separated from their families for at least 24 hours and, 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 and causing people in our country to be in fear, and in particular the Latino community. People are in fear all over the country. When you combine those raids with what just happened in El Paso, and again, do you think that this administration and this president might step back and say, wait a minute, after what just happened in El Paso, when it was motivated by, by hate against immigrants and Latino immigrants, do you think that, that a responsible leader would have said, don't do those raids? That it just, it, it, it shows a level of insensitivity and callousness that should not be traits of the President of the United States. You brought up El Paso. Um, we, CNN has some reporting out today about, uh, actually in the last 24 hours, 
that says that the White House rebuffed DHS efforts to focus on domestic terrorism. That, that the White House. I've, I gave a speech about that many, many months ago. I've been talking about this for months. They have shut down the the enforcement and the and the investigations of domestic terrorism. Meanwhile, we have a president of the United States who is constantly creating terror in the people of our country. Again, I, you, Donald Trump is ill-equipped to be president of the United States on so many levels, including the, the fact that he creates fear in the people of his own country. Senator Harris, thank you so much for spending all this time with us. Thank you. Uh, thank really you. I'm glad it. you're on the bus. Thanks for being on the bus. Day one of the five-day bus tour. Back to you, Jim.